Komitet Blessed Osail. Hi, and welcome to Icelandic for Foreigners. In this episode, we're going to be talking about feminine noun declensions. I'll be going over the most common feminine noun patterns that will hopefully get you started learning these declensions. And then in a later video, I will discuss more irregular feminine nouns. Now, there are four very common feminine endings that will often clue you in that a word is feminine and that will also tell you how the word behaves in its different forms. The most common feminine endings are a, no ending, meaning it ends in any number of consonants, un, and ing. So let's take these one at a time. First of all, feminine nouns ending in a. These are very common. The nominative form ends in an a, like stelpa, which means girl. For feminine nouns ending in a, the accusative, dative, and genitive singular all take the same form, which is stelpe, stelpe, stelpe. Now, with the definite article afterward, meaning the girl, we have in nominative stelpan, accusative stelpuna, dative stelpuni, genitive stelpunar. The plural nominative form is stelpur, and accusative is the same. And just as a heads up, feminine nouns are always the same in nominative and accusative plural for any form. Dative, we have stelpum, and genitive, we have stelpna, which is a slightly unusual form. So watch out for that N insertion with these feminine nouns ending in A. Now with the definite article, we have stelputnar, stelputnar, stelpunum, and stelpnana. And that does it for our feminine nouns ending in A. The next pattern is for feminine nouns that have no ending, which means that they end in a consonant, but it can be any consonant. And this type of word is generally one syllable. So the example that we're going to be looking at is mint, which means picture. Accusative is also mint, dative is mint, and genitive is mintar. The definite article endings look similar, but they're not exactly the same, so pay close attention. Nominative, we have mintin, accusative mintina, dative mintini, and genitive mintarinar. Now for plural, we have a new ending. We have mintir, accusative mintir, dative mintum, and genitive minta. And then with the definite article endings, we have mintitnar, mintitnar, mintonum, and mintana. All right, the next class of words is feminine nouns ending in un. This is another very common ending, and it'll almost always clue you in that it's a feminine word. For this pattern, we're going to use the word skemptun as an example, which means activity. We have nominative skemptun, accusative skemptun, dative skemptun, and genitive skemptunar. The definite article endings look identical to the, as they did on the previous slide. Now for the plural, it looks very similar to what we saw in the previous slide, but with one slight difference. The plural is skemptanir, so notice how the u changes into an a. So we have nominative skemptanir, accusative skemptanir, dative skemptunum, and genitive skemptana. And the definite article endings are the same as on the previous slide. Now the last pattern that I'd like to talk about is feminine nouns ending in ing. The example we're going to use is beyink, which means a bending or a declension, which is appropriate for what we're talking about. The pattern for these words is interesting because it takes certain aspects of each of the classes that we've seen before. So let's take a look. The nominative form is beyink, but the accusative form is beyink, almost as if the nominative form had ended in an a. The dative form is also beyink, and the genitive form is beyingar. Now, check out the definite article endings. Generally, we don't have the extra i in there except for the first one because it ends in a consonant, so we have beyingin, but after that, we cut the i in the endings. Now, let's look at plural. We have beyingar, beyingar, beyingum, and beyinga, and the endings are normal. All right, the last thing I'd like to talk about in this video is umlaut, which, if you don't remember, umlaut means that a vowel shifts into another vowel, and you see this a lot in feminine words. 
The first one we're going to talk about is when a becomes e. And rather than try and explain how it happens, we're just going to look at an example that will hopefully illustrate it for you. So we're going to look at the word tala, not the verb, the noun, which means a number. We would expect the accusative, dative, and genitive forms to be talu. But a lot of the time in Icelandic, a doesn't like to be followed by a u, so it turns into an u. So our accusative, dative, and genitive forms are tulu. Now this also affects our plural because again, the a doesn't like to be followed by a u, so it turns into an u. So instead of having talur, we have tulur. And accusative tulur and dative tulum. Now genitive doesn't have the change because we don't have a u. So in genitive, we keep the a. Now I'd like to talk about the reverse umlaut, which is when an u becomes an a. This usually occurs in a single syllable feminine word where u is the vowel in the stem. So the example that we'll be using is gyuv, which means gift. The accusative is also gyuv, and the dative is gyuv as well. But in genitive, once we add an extra syllable, when we add the ar genitive ending, then the u becomes an a, and we have gyavar. This also affects our plural form, where we have gyavir and gyavir in accusative. Now in dative, we have the u because an a can't be followed by a u. So in dative, we have gyavum, and in genitive, we have gyava. Now this also affects our nouns that end in a un. For example, the word puntun, which means an order. We have accusative puntun, dative puntun, and then genitive puntunar. So notice that the u doesn't change there. But then in plural, we have pantanir, where both the u and the u change into an a. Pantanir, puntunum, and Pantana. These words are a little bit tricky. That's all I have for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and feel free to leave comments or questions below and stay posted for another video on irregular feminine nouns coming in the future. Bless, bless.